Hello everyone. In this video, I am going to show you that how you can use the patch function in a very optimized way. So generally we know that patch function is used to update the existing records or create new records that we all know, right? Uh, but while updating an existing record, what is the second parameter of the function is the record which needs to be updated. That is the general syntax of a patch function. All right. Now in this video, what I'm going to cover is that uh, there are multiple records. Let's say uh, at my backend, I'm using the default or the standard user stable, data words table. And let's say there are multiple records in my backend with the first name as Vipul. And what you want to do is you want to update, let's say one of the property called main phone property, which was created last. So you want to update the record, which is created recently, the last record or the latest record you want to update using patch. Now in this video, I'm going to show you two approaches and I will show you that the second approach is why it is most optimized way of using the patch while updating the records in the dataverse table. All right. So for that, what I can do is I can start uh, the monitor. I can start or I can open the monitor directly so that uh, we can see that how much time or how much milliseconds each patch function, the different two approaches, which I'm going to show you, the two approaches is taking. All right. So this is the whole agenda of this video. Before uh, showing that, let me show you my table, the Dataverse table. So this is the Dataverse table. You can see the user's table, a by default or a standard uh, table, Dataverse table. This is not a custom table, just for the information. And here you see there are different properties of uh, a one record. Let's say Vipul Jain is my uh, full name and I have done the filter on the first name Vipul. And this is the main phone property which I want to update using patch. So this is the agenda of this video. Uh, let me repeat you the agenda and explain you the scenario again. What I want to do is uh, there are multiple records at the back end with the first name as Vipul. I want to update the record which is created recently or the last one record I want to update. And which property I want to update? I want to update the main phone property. All right. And I have already opened the monitor uh, just to check that uh, which particular approach or which particular way of doing the patch will take more time or which one will take the less time. But before that, let me show you also the implementation. In the implementation, you can see this is the first patch approach, which is uh, obviously not the recommended one. That's why I've written is patch approach one. Why? Because it will take more time. Now, what I'm doing here is I'm using the patch function on the user's table. And since I want to update the last record, which is created with the first name as Whipple, I am using sort by columns first of sort by column filter. Why filter? Because I want to only update the record where first name equal to Whipple and sort order dot descending. So only first record, that is the one record it will take where sort order is descending. That's why I'm showing you only one record in my data verse table. And which property I want to update? Main phone property. So let's say some random number, I want to update it. Currently, you can see at the back end, my main phone number is something different starting with 9867. Uh, with the code, I am going to update it with double seven three double triple nine and something like that. So this is a one way of doing the patch of updating a record or updating a property using patch. Now I will show you the optimized approach as well. And then quickly we will see that which one is optimized and why I'm saying it is the optimized one. But let's see the implementation. In this patch, what I'm going to do first is I'm using a with function. Now, very, very important, guys, that you please understand, go to the official documentation of with. Uh, the details I'm going to share in the comment section of this video, what is the with function and the official documentation. So what I'm going to do with with first is I'm creating a variable with the same uh, code which I used in my first approach. But here I'm creating a variable first with with function. So with function and then I am using the patch again on the user with the same variable and I'm updating with some, uh, let's say, number again. So these are the two approaches. Definitely both are going to work. I'm not saying that uh, anything is wrong in these two approaches. Only thing is which one is performant enough from a performance optimization. That is the whole intention of this video. Please remember, I'm not saying that uh, this approach is wrong or this approach is right. Only uh, my intention of this video is to show you in the monitor 
uh, that which approach is taking more time and which approach is taking less time. So as a developer or a pro developer, citizen developer, architect, if you are writing some business logic and using the patch function, please always remember and think about the performance of your app. That is the whole intention of this video. So let's see this in action. What I'm going to do is I'm going to play this app and I'm going to click on both these buttons one by one and then we will see the time which will take in monitor. So let's do this in action. First, I'm going to click on the button first, which is approach one without with function. So let's click on it. I have clicked on the button. All right. On the first button where we are not using the with function. So let's see if our data is updated. It should be updated with some double seven. Let me refresh uh, the table. You see the, uh, the data has been updated. The main phone property has been updated. So in this case also the patch function is absolutely working fine. And let's see what has been uh, logged in the monitor. You can see here that some milliseconds it is showing. So uh, we have to uh, look at the patch row, get rows and get navigation rows and table. So you can see here 3536 milliseconds, 642 and 341. This sum of these uh, duration will be the one request which we have done now. All right. Now, uh, what we are going to do, we are going to click on the second button. I'm going to click on the second button and then again, the mobile number property will be updated. Let me click on it. I have clicked on the second button now, which is the optimized approach with the with function of PowerFX formulas. So let's see this in action. Let's again refresh our table and you can see again the main phone number has been updated. So in this case here, both the patch functions are working. Now let's see the most important part, the monitor. All right. So initially we saw that it took 3536, 642 and 341 milliseconds. And in the last, in the second optimized approach, you see how much time it has taken. You can see here very clearly 391, 446, 350, only these much milliseconds. But in the first call, it took 3536 milliseconds, 642 and 341. You can compare these three numbers with these three numbers. Maybe it is just one fifth or one tenth of it. Uh, probably like seems to be like that. But you can see how performant the second call is. And that's where I'm saying my second patch function is the most optimized one as compared to the first one. Please remember, please use this monitor uh, control or monitor, which is available by default in your apps to see that how uh, your app is actually working and how what are the different operations or calls are, bet are being getting called within the monitor of your app. This is a very good tool, I will say, which every developer should use. So that's all in this video. Uh, I have shown you that how you can use the patch in a very optimized way. Thank you.